Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk about some classic equipment here, some classic trucks. Um, I'm not going to do a full-blown diag on this. I just pulled this in for demonstration purposes. Now, um, if you guys don't know Mario from Mario, our Super Mario Auto Diagnostics, I'll put a link to his channel down below. He had commented on one of the Facebook groups letting us know that Pico, um, for PicoScope, had released an update for some of their stuff. And I mentioned that I wish they would come out with some more automotive based uh, tools. Um, the automotive di diagnostic part of their scope is kind of lacking and it's kind of buggy. And I don't know if they really focus on that part of it. But Mario asked me what could we have in there that we don't already have. And any of you that have seen the scope videos out there using the Pico scope or even the snap on scope, the modern scope is pretty amazing on what you can see. Um, I like the Pico myself. I have snap-on scopes. I have the Pico scope. This guy right here is a snap-on counselor scope. Um, we had the counselor 2 for a while, but it was kind of buggy um, because it had gone through a, a fire in another shop. Um, so sometimes it shut off and it was a pain, but we still have our trusty old counselor and we use this on anything with points. Um, a lot of the old V8s. Now this is fuel injected behind me but I'll use it for a demonstration because I can still use most of the functions that are built into this. Um, what does PicoScope not have that I wish we had that this does have? Some of the waveform viewers are so much easier in this. Um, when you boot this thing up, you pick how many cylinders you have, if it's a four stroke, a two stroke, and then you punch in your firing order. And then I'll zoom in on this in a minute. There's buttons on the front. You select what cylinder you want to look at. So you don't have to, uh, once you have a sync channel, um, you would just start your firing order at that sync channel. Once you have a sync, you just push the button for what cylinder you want. It goes right to that cylinder, displays it on the screen. Um, it's a nice clean signal, not a lot of noise, but it doesn't have the, uh, the pickup resolution that the, the PicoScope has. So that's why you're not seeing the noise. You can kill cylinders with this. Now this wouldn't work on the newer cars with a coil on plug because you could fry the computer or something. But on the old uh, single ignition coil setup, you can kill cylinders. Now you'd have to de deactivate idle control. And once you kill a cylinder, it's, you do a power balance test and it will show you what the RPM drop is on each cylinder. So that is a cool feature that this machine has. It'll show you what the maximum KV is for each cylinder, which is pretty cool. Now the counselor too, it had a, a better waveform viewer. You could see stuff in Parade. You could see it in Raster. Um, so you could see every cylinder on the screen, but it has own line for each cylinder. So you didn't have to count it out. You didn't have to identify stuff. And the Counselor 2 also had a, uh, a vacuum probe and one of these cords. Um, so you could actually watch intake pulses. And now that's kind of a newer thing that people are doing with the PicoScope, at least over the last decade. Um, it's kind of getting big for in-cylinder pressure transducers and for intake pulse uh, sensors. But Snap-on was doing it years and years ago. The Counselor 2 also had a four gas analyzer built in. Um, that was the first time I had ever used a gas analyzer. Luckily, there was a oxygen sensor for it, brand new in the packaging in the bottom of the box that wasn't damaged by the smoke from the fire. I plugged that in and diagnosed a, a Subaru that was having an issue. And that's shortly after that, I bought my Snap-on five gas analyzer because I realized how useful and handy those were. So I've already got this set up. Now I had to look up the firing order on this Ford because I normally don't have to deal with firing orders on a Ford. Chevys I know by heart, but on this Ford, the firing order is 1542-6378. And I've already got everything hooked up. Our leads are connected to the coil primary, which I hooked up at the ignition module on the distributor just because it's easy to get to. We have a clamp around the coil wire. We have a clamp around the number one cylinder. And then we have battery positive and battery ground. Now, believe it or not, this is also a mobile scope if you choose to. It has DC hookups on the back that you can hook it up, up to the battery and take it for a test drive. And one of our guys here said that when he used to work on an old farm, um, you know, back in the, the late 80s, they had one of these and they took it on the road with them. They, they had a cabinet like this, but it just pops off you hook up some long leads to the battery and you would drive around with it and try to read this screen while driving. So let me zoom you guys in on this. I'll start the truck up and I'll show you what this can do. 
Okay, I'm hoping that you guys will be able to hear me over this truck. So from the home screen, we have these green buttons here. Those are our options for what we want to see on the screen. So since I'm already uh, selected this stuff, I just have to press one to confirm that it's correct. And now we can pick a pattern. So I'm just going to jump to primary pattern. And this is a real similar to view to what you can see on the Pico scope. Now, if you're on the ignition coil primary, you're going to see this pattern and then another one and another one and another one and another one. And it's not until you add a channel for syncing it up or secondary pickup, I should say, uh, around one of the spark plug wires that you can identify one cylinder after another. So I have that pickup on cylinder number one. So we can either go through the firing order by pushing the buttons over here, or we can just go through one through eight. I'll just do that. So cylinder two, cylinder three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They all look fairly similar. Now the counselor two does stack these on the screen so you can see them all at once. Um, this one does not. So secondary pattern. This is gonna show us what's going out of the coil and not the signal going into the coil. So it looks very similar. Now, this is really handy for vehicles with points. Uh, most people don't deal with Dwell nowadays. Um, this has an electronic pickup in this distributor, so we're not gonna worry about Dwell either. But a vehicle that has adjustable points, you go into this screen, most of them are set anywhere from 32 to 45. So you look at this and decide if your dwell is good. But not only that, it gives you the dwell for each cylinder. So if you see a couple of cylinders that have really high or low dwell, then more than likely the distributor shaft is worn out or the uh, little cam lobe that's on the distributor that opens and closes the points is worn out. This, they're all fairly even between six and seven. Now this has an ignition module that controls the uh, the dwell and the firing of the coil. So next we have the shorting bar graph. Now this is where it's really handy for a power, power balance test. Now this vehicle does have an idle air control motor so I should disable that but I'll leave it hooked up just for the demonstration. A lot of cars do this naturally and when you go to look at misfire data or cylinder balance tests it's looking at the cam sensor to give you the same results that I'm doing here without killing the cylinder. But I'm just gonna kill cylinder number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, typically you would go longer to get a more accurate result, but just for the demonstration purpose, it prevented the coil from firing by holding that coil to ground, I believe, during that firing event. So, when I killed that cylinder, it tells me how many RPMs I dropped, how long I held the button, because you want to keep these matched up the best you can. And that gives you a graph. Now, if it increased RPM, like say you had two wires crossed and one's firing better than the other, um, it'll be a hollow box with a green outline. Not only that, I can kill half the engine. So that's all the even cylinders and all of the odd cylinders. Now, this doesn't really work if the firing order isn't exactly even odd, even odd. Um, you're gonna have different rates. But this can be handy for determining if a carburetor has an issue on one plane. Um, but even then, you're normally split up you know, inside ports, outside ports, so it's not gonna be even that way either. So over here, what else do we have? A KV bar graph. It's gonna show us what our spark, our maximum KV is for each cylinder. So we can look here and say, if we, if we see one that the maximum KV jumps up to like 25,000 volts, okay, that cylinder probably misfired uh, or was running lean or the valve didn't seal. And then we also have a, miss, a minimum KV. If like we, right here, we have one that's a little low. Did, that cylinder is that running a little rich and most of the time it's firing lower than the rest. I'm not really sure, but you can determine diagnostic information based off minimum maximum KV over time without having to go in to the scope and actually measure with a ruler or by a visual what each firing line is. 
So I don't know exactly when this machine was built or when the first counselor was built, getting hit by the boom there, but the owner's manual for this thing was printed in 87. So that was a long time ago. The counselor two was probably released, you know, a few years to five years after that. And it had a lot of extra features that I wish this one had. But since that machine was unreliable for us after it went through the fire, um, we decided to get rid of it. The counselor one, I use that cart. That's what's underneath my camera right now. But I use that for my diagnostic cart right now. It doesn't have a boom. So we took our good counselor, put it onto the counselor two cart, built the boom or kept the boom, ran all the wires through it just to make it easier. We kept all the attachments. Um, I think this thing has some cool features that I think would be handy to have in the Pico scope software or even in some of the other scopes. I don't know if the new snap on like the Zeus or the Modus has that stuff built in. Um, I really don't grab the snap on <laughs> handheld scanners and scopes for, uh, for in-depth diagnostic stuff. Um, for basic stuff for me, it's fine, but since I have the Pico scope, I find that easier to use, so I grab that. One thing that I think would be really cool if Pico did is have a deal where you put in the firing order, have it break it down, give you the, uh, I know you can superimpose your uh, ignition waveforms on the Pico and watch like a, the histogram and they overlay each other. Um, I don't remember if you can do the parade or the raster. Um, I suppose the standard waveform, if you broke it out, or put a lot of screen time on would be a parade waveform. But I believe that this like cuts out the stuff in the middle that you don't need to see, the dead space. Another thing that I wish uh, the PicoScope had was a crankshaft, camshaft decoding um, software. You know, a lot of the standalone computers out there, you put in how many wheel, uh, trigger wheels you have, how many missing teeth, you put what the degrees of the missing teeth are, that would be awesome if PicoScope had that ability. Um, so a common one, we'll say a, a 36 tooth crank with a missing tooth, and we'll say 30 degrees from top dead center. Now you have to know that information for it to be useful, but once you have the crankshaft information and what that trigger should look like, it would be really easy to diagnose variable valve timing issues, cam timing issues, any of that stuff. Um, I think it would take more programming to get that stuff in. The user would have to enter more data and know and have to enter it correctly. But if you had that, and say you have a variable valve timing problem like I had on the Kia that I had a video the other day, I could hook that scope up, cam sensor, crank sensor, and it would tell me what the degrees of my camshaft are. Where is my camshaft sitting? And then I could command the variable valve timing on turn it off and display that on the screen. That would be kind of handy for me, but at the same time, normally the scan tool will offer that type of reading. So I, I can see why they don't put it in there. I just think that there's uh, many opportunities for the scope software writers to branch out and include features. Even if some of them were paid features, I think technicians would buy that. Um, we pay for software in our scanners all the time. I don't want to have to pay for PicoScope updates. But at the same time, we deal with a lot of PicoScope glitches and we don't complain that much about them because the software is free, maybe, I don't know. But glitches are quite common and they'll fix a glitch in one release and the next release, the glitch is back. The PicoScope diagnostic software, some people say that it hasn't worked for five years, um, that the, uh, that the software is broken now. I don't know which features they're talking about. I'm guessing it's kind of like the, uh, the relative compression or the power balance test. You'll get different results over and over again. But I think there's opportunity to drastically improve the way that the PicoScope uses the software. Also, does anyone know of any third-party software that works with the PicoScope box? Because that would be another way around it, is if a third-party manufacturer built some software that was specific for diagnostic purposes. Um, that would be kind of cool. PicoScope does have the serial decoding for CAN messages and GM LAN messages. I think that there, there are opportunities there that could be, uh, like right now if you use it, you have to pretty much know binary coding or hexadecimal coding 
for that to be usable. So if, if they would break it down and say, you know, this message is coming from here, this message is coming from here, um, I think that would greatly increase our diagnostic ability to troubleshoot a network. Um, that's the stuff that's coming to my mind right now. I don't want to make this video too long. It's already really long. But showcasing the old counselor, we keep it for uh, street rods, carbureted vehicles. You know, an old V8 that we have a weird issue with anytime we got to do dwell. I don't use it for dwell anymore because I have a snap on timing light that has dwell built in. So I just grab that. But the rest of the guys in the shop, they just grab this. We keep it in the shed. It comes out maybe once a month. But when we need it, we have it. So like I said, if you have any questions or comments or stuff that you think would be interesting to have in there, put that down below. If you guys want to see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.